The last set of genetic problems is what we call sex-linked problems. What that means is that the genes or the the genes associated with the disorder are only found in sex chromosomes and not your autosomes. So how that affects um, offspring is that it actually affects females and males differently dependent on how those genes are found in the sex chromosomes. So just as a little recap of what um, sex chromosomes are, we know that in, in males, you have, um, let me see, here is your males, you have your XY chromosome. And in females, you have your XX chromosomes. So these are your sex chromosomes. And some disorders associated with sex length are color blindness, uh, hemophilia, we're going to see a, a lot of examples on, with the royal family and their pedigree and their family tree and who carries the hemophilia gene or who doesn't. And also your Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So how sex-linked uh, chromosomes work is that, again, males contain your X and Y chromosome while female contains your XX chromosomes. So if you were to give uh, look at the example for color blindness, uh, we know that if you were to have just normal vision, that means you can see all the colors, you would have a regular genotype, which is dominant as capital letter N. So we would assume that this would be dominant because this is the most popular one. And if we were to look at someone with color blindness, who is color blind, we'll use the recessive N or genotype with the lowercase N. So how does that play a role in your male and female chromosomes? If you look at the male one, we know that it has X and Y chromosome. And all these sex-linked ones are carried in the X chromosome. So these ones are only found in your X chromosome. So it actually doesn't affect the Y chromosome at all. There are some disorders that are associated with the Y, but majority of the, the disorders are actually found in your X chromosome. So these are more like the X chromosome disorders. So if you look at the male one, the male one can actually have one of two different combinations with the allele. You can have a... Um, X carrying the dominant gene, so this would mean a normal vision. And you can have one that is carrying the recessive gene, which is your color blindness. So here's my XY, so you can have this one, and then you can have the lower case, and this represents color blind. That's pretty straightforward for males. However, for females, because you have X, X chromosome, you have two different chromosomes that these alleles can go into, you can actually have three different combinations. So you can have XX, XX, and XX. And then now let's look at the alleles. Let me just change the colors. So one combination is that a person, a female, can actually be homozygous dominant. So you can have two of these dominant uh, genotypes on both X chromosome, and this just represents normal vision. And in addition to that, you can have one that are that is homozygous recessive. So it has two lowercase um, ends or the recessive gene on those two X chromosomes. And this would lead to color blindness. And you can also have one of each. So you can have a heterozygous. And because this is heterozygous, this one will still showcase normal vision, but it's a carrier because it carries the recessive gene. So this person will be a carrier of the, the color blindness gene because this female actually contains um, the, the recessive gene. So we can see that the females are the only ones that can be carriers because they can be normal phenotype but still carry the recessive gene, while the males cannot be carriers because they either have it, such as uh, being the normal one, or they have the recessive gene. They can't have, they, they can't showcase the normal vision and carry the recessive gene. So let's check out a problem here. Both the mother and the father of a colorblind male appear to be normal. Colorblindness is recessive. From whom did the son inherit the allele for the colorblindness? And what are the genotypes of the mother, father, and the son? So to start this example, I'm going to write down, I have the mother, well, this is the father, the mother, and they gave offspring to a male. And we know that the father, mother and the father of a colorblind male. So this is going to be the son who is colorblind. And because this person, the offspring is a male, I know that it's going to have an XY chromosome. And because it's colorblind, it's recessive, I'm going to have the lowercase n. 
And then for the parents, they are both appear to be normal. So then how do we do that? So let's do all of the sex chromosomes, XY and an XX. And both of these are going to form this offspring. So then how does this occur? So then let's look at this. Both the parents appear to be normal. So we can immediately look at the male side and say that it must have the capital letter N because the male was normal. So then what about the female? Well, because the female one appeared to be normal. So it has to have the uppercase dominant gene of normal vision. And because, but then because the offspring had that, that small N, it must have the recessive lowercase n for colorblindness. So we can actually calculate this with Punnett square by doing the male and female um, Punnett square. So let's do that. So this is the male. So then this is the father. It has a capital letter N, Y, and then X, X, and then capital letter N and lowercase n. And if you were to film the Punnett square, you can see that this, uh, this is my homozygous dominant. This is my heterozygous, who is a carrier female. And then my XY, this is all for my male side. This is also for my male side. And because we're just looking at the male here, we can see that, oh, this does happen. So this is my only chance. It's actually 50% chance of this happening. So don't think that it's one in four, but it's 50% for males because there's only two XY combinations here. So the possibility of uh, the probability of of the males having color blindness is actually 50 percent however for females if you look at the probability it's actually zero percent for color blindness but you have one that is a carrier so that's a pretty unique thing so then um from whom did the son inherit the allele for color blindness we have to say that it got the the color blindness from the mom and the genotypes of the mother must be your carrier your heterozygous right here the, this is the father and the son must be this one. So those are your answers. And let's check out another question. A woman who is colorblind, what are the chances that her son will be colorblind as well? And if she's married to a man with a normal vision, what are the chances that her daughters will be colorblind or will be carriers? So there's a lot of different things going on here. So let's start off with the top one. We have a woman who's colorblind, so that's X. And then it's a homozygous recessive because in order to be colorblind for a female, it has to show both recessive uh, alleles. What are the chances that her son will be colorblind? Well, we don't know because it depends who she has her kid with. So then there's two combinations, a normal version, normal vision, or a male with uh, who is colorblind as well. So if she's married with, to a man with normal vision, so she decides to marry a person with normal vision. Let's check out the Punnett square. So here's my male. And then this is for my female. So set this up on the side. And then do my grid. And let's see the probabilities. So this is just for my females. XX, I have a capitalized N, small n, XX, whoop, XX, capital N, small n. This is for my males. And then this is for my male as well. So then what are the chances that her daughters will be uh, colorblind? So we're only looking at this side, the XX chromosome. And you can see that both of them are X and then a capital N and small n. That means that they're heterozygous or they're carriers. So you can see that 100% of them will be carriers and 0% of them will be colorblind. So if they were to have, have females, 0% will be colorblind. However, if we were to look at the male one as, um, as an extension, 100% of the male offspring will be colorblind because both of the sex chromosomes, the X chromosomes of the mother carry the recessive allele. So that's uh, another question about that. So let's look at the last question of this, this video. Both the husband and the wife have normal vision. The wife gives birth to a colorblind daughter. Is it more likely that the father had normal vision or was colorblind? What does this lead you to deduce about the girl's percentage? So let's start off by looking at the husband and the wife's genotype. So my male one is XY. My female one is XX. 
and I know that the husband and the wife contain normal vision, so I know for sure that the male must have a capital letter dominant N. And then for the wife one, uh, we don't know. It could be a heterozygous, like this, as a carrier, or it could be homozygous dominant for normal vision. So let's try both of them. So then here's the first combination. If this is my male, and if we take this one, this looks like a W, let's fix this one. Whoop, that made it worse. <laughs> and if you were to do the Punnett square of this heterozygous one, we're gonna see that N, N, capital N, lowercase N, X, Y, capital N, and then finally, that's the first combination. And then we have to do the second combination, which is the same for male, but then the female would be homozygous dominant, like this. So complete the Punnett square, and complete the dominant uh, Punnett square. You can see that it's, they're both homozygous dominant. Here's my Y, and there's my Y. So let's answer the question. The wife gives birth to a colorblind daughter. So then let's look at all the daughters here. Let me change color so it's easier to see. So if we were to look at all of the the daughters, this is XX, this is XX, XX, and XX. Is it more likely for the like the father had normal vision or colorblind? So we can see that in both of these scenarios, for both of the father's normal vision genotypes, you cannot get a, a colorblind female. So you can see that this is going to be normal vision, normal vision by carrier, normal vision, normal vision. So in order to get a colorblind daughter with the mother's genotype, the father must be colorblind, must be of the recessive N. So if we were to look at that, even if we were to have a homozygous carrier for the, the wife, we can see that the last combination here, this is where it happens. So this is the 50% chance of the female or the daughter having colorblind. So you can see that the this whole percentage is all dependent on um, for this one, it's all dependent on the uh, the father's um, genotype because the mother has to be um, either normal vision or carry with normal vision. So the percentage is zero percent if given the the situation here. But in order for a daughter to be colorblind, you need the father to be. Uh, colorblind carrying this recessive gene. So hopefully the past three, three questions has helped you um, understand a little bit more about sex-linked genetic disorders and how to do that with Punnett squares because that's where those disorders, those genes are only carried on your sex chromosomes and not other ones. That's why you have your XY chromosomes instead of just regular letters. So thanks for watching.